Okay, we're here outside Redem, I think you pronounce it. I'm here with a gentleman who is part of the pro-Palestine protest outside the, the Israeli cosmetics store here. Could you just tell me a little bit about, just very locally first, why are you guys here today? So we're here at the Kedem store because it's a store that sells Israeli products and we're trying to build for a boycott campaign uh, against Israeli economic, uh, cultural and political interests because we feel that that's a great way of putting pressure on Israel yeah. in the only way that we can. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. We know many people in all the media around the world quite rightly talk about how the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, seem to be punishing all of Gaza for the actions of a few militants. And we see bomb after bomb falling in residential areas, killing civilians. What would you say if a Israeli said to you that what you're doing by boycotting this shop is targeting all Israeli civilians for the actions of a few in government? I think that's a very good question. Um, I think to start with, uh, to start with, um, Israeli civilians hold the responsibility for the actions of their government. Uh, now, I don't mean that I do not in any way think that they should come to any physical harm for that, but if you live in a state that oppresses another people in the most inhumane way possible, then you bear a responsibility for those actions and the consequences of, the, of those actions when it comes to peaceful means like boycott, divestment and sanctions. Yeah. Okay, a young Israeli man, like maybe younger than us, I'm 33, how old are you? 34. 34, hey, good man. Anyway, men younger than us, they don't have any, someone might say they don't have a choice whether they're born Israeli or whether they're born Hindu, born Muslim, born Palestinian. It's, it's outside our control where we're born. So I had an issue when George Galloway um, refused to speak to an Israeli student at Oxford University last year. Do you remember that? I don't remember the incident, but I can imagine it happening. Yeah. yeah. So how would you answer the, the thing that Israelis cannot help being Israelis and boycotting the whole nation when there's so many activist Israelis who might want to start a business in the West I guess uh, when it comes to the George Gallo incident, as I said, I'm not aware of the incident, but if it was an Israeli student who was in any way representing Israel, uh, then I can see why they wouldn't speak to them in an official or an official, an official capacity. If they're, if it, however, I would have no problem speaking one-to-one -one with with, with Israelis. I, I, I myself, I'm from Gaza, yeah. but through my time in, in the UK, I have made Israeli friends, yeah. some of them quite close friends, actually. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm actually going to be rewind a bit. Oh, okay, let me ask you another uh, question. No, 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 okay. no, as in, like, I'm not actually comfortable saying saying that uh, because some people in Gaza might take issue, might take issue issue with that as I know it's I know it might sound like self-censorship but uh, oh, no, go I'm gonna say I, I'm gonna say I, I, I have made Israeli friends yeah. and I have no issue with Israelis per se but I do I do expect of Israelis to take a moral stance yeah. and if some if, if an Israeli is not against the occupation then it's hard for me to be a friend of theirs yeah. that's so that's that's where i draw the line yeah. uh, and yes people have no choice where they are born but when you when when you come of age yeah. you do have you can make moral choices where of where you live to an extent and how you carry yourself in the country you live in in terms of yeah. Uh, opposing the status quo and saying no, not in my name, thank you very much. You know, in um, okay, Gaza and the West Bank has been occupied for approximately 100 years now, is it? Uh, 66 years. 66 years, thank you. Today. Um, well, not today. Okay. And Hamas, their charter, their mission statement is that they want the absolute destruction of the state of Israel. Yeah. Do you think peace is possible whilst that is an actual mission statement of a government, of a nation? Mm. Um, unfortunately
unfortunately in politics there are a lot of artifacts that kind of get continue to be bandied around and I think to an extent that's one of them uh, I think I, I don't speak for Hamas yeah. but I don't believe that they I don't believe that they actually espouse that view anymore Hamas have been been quite open about reaching out to Israel uh, they've offered most recently in the midst of the, the, the war that's going on they offered a 10-year truce for a return to normal life in Gaza they had we'd like to offer you a 10-year truce uh, could you just please take your tanks away from the border don't target Palestinian farmers farming their land near the border don't target fishermen trying to ply a living in the sea um, allow freedom of movement in and out of, of Gaza that was the only th those are the only conditions for, for a truce so I think um, uh, while I don't agree with political Islam uh, I do believe that Hamas actually gets a bad press uh, oh, in this in this situation okay I'm glad you, you talked about the very latest things that are happening now yesterday was the deadliest day of the 14-day conflict I think it was about a hundred Gazans um, about 15 children killed when you ask anyone who's like pro-government in Israel or pro-IDF they will say that a sovereign nation cannot just do nothing when and there are thousands of rockets flying from Gaza into Ashkelon, into Nidarot, into you know. T Are you sure about that figure? Yeah, it's been thousands of rockets over the over, over the thousand, even the over the Hamas. over the past two two weeks. Yeah, even okay. the Hamas admitted it's over a thousand rockets. All right. So what does a nation do when there are a thousand rockets, say a hundred a day, coming into your territory? Um, Maybe stop the occupation. You took the words right out of my mouth. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's the the. Faced, faced with the threat of violence, uh, I think an, instinct, an instinctive animalistic reaction is to fight, fight, but there's another one is, is to a, a flight reaction. But then we're, I think, I'd like to think that as societies we're a bit more advanced than animals and, uh, shit, that's probably controversial. Well, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a topic entirely, that one. Like, nature, nurture, yeah. are we spiritual beings? Anyway, carry on. But yeah, as societies, I think we, I would like to think we have a higher level of development where we can actually look at the consequences of our actions and realise that this threat is not happening for no reason and address the causes behind the threat which yeah. are the occupation, the siege of Gaza, yeah. the, 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 those are, the, those are the, the, the reasons behind the threat of the rockets yeah. and address them. Take, take the, the, the offer of truce that was offered. Hamas, Hamas has been kind of knocking around Gaza in a position of power since 2006 yeah. and so many uh, initiatives have been made by them. You know, look, let's talk guys. All we want is to live in dignity yeah. and it's been just rejected, batted back, bat, batted back. Uh, the split between Hamas and Fatah is, 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 is actually a um, part of that because like the Palestinian Authority on the West Bank is, you know, of, of a more liberal uh, uh, point of view. So, so, so yeah, I mean, let's sit down and bloody and talk. Uh, there's, um, there's politics, there's morality, and then there's what Henry Kissinger calls the real politique, which is all about power play, and it's about might is right and so forth. Would you agree with me that Israel is a particular, it's a special case because the Jewish people were almost made extinct in the 1940s in Europe? Um, a very large proportion of the Jewish diaspora were actually exterminated, and that has an effect on the collective psyche of a population. And let's not forget, Israel, there's been two major wars where six surrounding Arab countries have tried to wipe out Israel. So that's three times in the last century where there's been an organized attempt to extinguish Jewish people from the planet. Would you say that is a strong mitigating circumstance? Or should you, would you say that Israel should man the fuck up? And um, I don't think that the Holocaust and the threat from uh, the surrounding Arab countries is a strong mitigating circumstance. Israel's approach to the Palestinians 
the Zionist uh, philosophy, so to speak, predates the Holocaust. Um, the leaders of Zionism, it might have been Menachem Begin uh, and, and others, uh, discussed how they were going to take over, you know, create the State of Israel, and um, and they said, sorry, I'm, I'm I'm not good with my quotes, but they but they said something to the effect that uh, we're not going to get be able to do this without with with without subjugating without subjugating the the local population. Uh, so I believe, unfortunately, that. In, in one part, the, 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 the Israeli offensive, the Israeli menta the Zionist mentality predates the Holocaust, yet the defensive psyche is a byproduct of that that has been, I'm afraid to say, in some way manipulated by politicians uh, for their gains. I'd just like to thank you very much for answering these questions, and like yourself, I hope that children stop dying today as well. Thanks. Um, thank you. Thank you. Shame I didn't really say anything about the, much about the actual... Oh no, I asked you at the start. No, but I just wish I'd said something about...